here's an unpopular opinion. Sonic the Hedgehog is awesome. But I think the series could use more war, violence, propaganda, and North Koreans. I know, I know. Strange. Very strange and specific. So specific, in fact, that I may just get my wish after all. Because today, we're going to be checking out a North Korean cartoon made for children. And I do mean children in air quotes because, hey, what's more kid-friendly than getting impaled and shot to death with machine guns? Wait, what? Yup, this is Squirrel and Hedgehog, a cartoon that ran for 40 years in North Korea. And we hedgehogs are willing to fight if need be. Come on, step it up! It's definitely an interesting beast, so let's tackle it, I guess. Now, before we start, I think it's important to mention that I'm not trying to make any political commentary with this video. If I do make jokes or anything, it's all in good fun. Like, any time I talk about Russia, I always play the... Even though communism isn't a thing anymore. Probably, I don't know. But with all of that being said, this cartoon definitely has motives, but we'll get to that when we get there. Episode 1 starts off seemingly pretty normal, where everyone is super happy and everything is perfect in North Korea, I mean Squirrel Land. Yeah, the propaganda starts pretty early. But then the weirdest thing happens, the most unnatural transition in a TV show I think I've ever seen. We go from celebrating squirrels, fade out, and then... The evil weasels are always thirsting for new slaves. Jesus! Okay, fine. Yeah, let's just go down that route. This one's coming with us. No, please! I don't want to! So yeah, after that wonderful scene, we cut to some squirrel village where we meet our main... protagonist? I guess? His name is Gyumsagi, but most people just refer to him as Gold Squirrel since it's easier to pronounce. And he's upset because the weasels are invading his village while burning and slaughtering all of his friends and family. Uh, wait. Please wake up, I need you. We all need you. Oh, come on, wake up. Wow. How totally depressing. Anyway, Gold Squirrel eventually does the right thing and joins the military, because the only way to achieve happiness is through war and eliminating your enemies. I mean, hey, it's not a terrible message, and under normal circumstances would lead to a fun, wacky cartoon series. I mean, look at the original Teen Titans. It's a story about coming together to solve your problems with violence. Tom and Jerry, solved with violence. But there's quite a strong difference between this... And Squirrel and Hedgehog doing this. <laughs> yeah, a little more mean-spirited. The violence in this show is so unnecessary. There's no way you can show this to kids and be like, No, they're just having fun. That weasel getting an arrow shot through his neck is wacky. It's not. Gold Squirrel eventually meets up with the unnecessarily attractive hedgehog furry bait, Lieutenant Vixen. Oh yeah! Now I'm not a furry, but I guess she's hot. What? Come on, guys! Who <laughs> who wrote that in the script? <laughs> I work alone. You what? As well as the new evil forces, the wolves. They're aggressive, in your face, boisterous, and just invaded for no reason other than to get involved. Now I think is a good time to talk about the messed up propaganda stuff. Now the studio who worked on this cartoon was SEK Studios, and the staff have been pretty split on the message and purpose of this cartoon. Some of them are on the record for saying that the animation was created to teach love, friendship, and patriotism to children. Okay, fair enough. But some of the other staff say differently. For example, the show follows Gold Squirrel and Lieutenant Vixen. Squirrel and Hedgehog. Oh, I get it now. And some staff have said that the squirrels are meant to represent the North Korean people, and the hedgehogs are meant to represent the North Korean military. You know, the ultimate good guys and heroes. Which is fine, but this is where things get a little, you know, 
racist. The weasels are meant to represent the Japanese. The weasels in the show, may I remind you, were always sneaky and full of deceptive tricks. And if you don't know, the Japanese have a racist stereotype of being sneaky. And who could this new invading force of the wolves be? Hmm, they're loud, obnoxious, and in your face! I wonder who- America! Okay, well that's... accurate. So yeah, later in the season they decided, yeah, let's make fun of America. How dare you! America is great! We have... We got Taco Bell. Okay, so all joking aside, that is kinda racist if that's the case. The animals' personalities are way too specific for this to be a coincidence. But, to be super fair, it's way more subtle than what we did in America with... Moving on. Anyway, it's been a while since we've seen someone brutally murdered. There we go! The cartoon was starting to feel empty. Here's a cute duck character that was introduced as a positive and upbeat character. Perfect! Every kid show needs someone like this. So what do they do? Yeah, because that's what kids want to see. Their beloved duck character pulling the pin of a grenade and sacrificing itself. North Korea, why? The last episode that's been released so far came out in June 2012. And wow, what an ending. So the episode involves Gold Squirrel, now a more established and seasoned soldier, taking these cute, young, plucky upstarts under his wing. They go to invade some underground laboratory when a shootout happens, of course, why wouldn't it? Be sure to give the kids a gun! The episode ends with this evil scientist trapping the kids in a room, slowly filling it with poisonous gas, and Gold Squirrel looks on, realizing the gravity of the situation that involving children in matters of war, no matter how eager they are, will have serious consequences that won't end well. And here's that scene completely unedited. What in the absolute hell is that nonsense? First things first, I was just kidding. Conker's stupid little brother here doesn't even care about the kids being poisoned. No, notice, his dialogue is more focused on the enemies and their willingness to cross any line to defeat them. He doesn't even look slightly worried about the kids. You had a perfect chance to show sympathy and give the character some, uh, you know, character. But no, just teach the kids that you don't need friends. If they die, they die. But ooh, look at those dastardly villains. They must be defeated. I don't need friends. They disappoint me. And secondly, the tone shift. We go from a tense, dramatic scene to the ending of a Looney Tunes cartoon. No, my friends, what have I done? This is all my fault. That's all, folks! And this was the last episode that's been released so far. Seven years later, and still nothing. Not that I really care. Overall, the cartoon, uh, sucks? Yeah, sucks. North Korean propaganda stuff aside, it's just a poorly structured and presented show. It wants to be a kid-friendly message, teaching the youth about patriotism in a fun, exciting way, but its tone is just so off. Seeing cute characters shoot machine guns, get executed, and impaled multiple different times isn't charming or cute. What's wrong with you? I won't be too hard on the propaganda side of things considering 
It's a cartoon for kids. Kids don't understand symbolism. And honestly, I probably wouldn't even notice the racist stereotypes if I didn't do some research. But the violence and overall lack of sympathy and empathy is something I really can't get behind. Whenever there's a shootout, there's always a character that looks terrified and fears for their life. And the animators made it a point so you would notice it. And that would be a good chance for our main character to maybe have a heart and not kill him. But no, they do, who cares, they're evil. However, the studio behind Squirrel and Hedgehog have made other cartoons like Clever Raccoon Dog. <laughs> that looks exactly like Squirrel and Hedgehog, but with an actual positive and not messed up message. Usually about car safety or hygiene or something like that. As for this piece of crap though, no. Never again. I would rather play Sonic Boom 200,000 times than I would watch this again. And in the words of the hedgehog himself, That's no good.